nothing happened for about 18 months because under the old extradition arrangements, we never would have been extradited. They would have had to produce proper evidence of a crime against Nat West. What then happened was that uh, the UK government secretly negotiated a new extradition treaty with the United States. And this new extradition treaty, which they shoveled into, into law through the back door under uh, the guise of the war against terror, um, removed the requirement for the United States to support any extradition request with evidence. All they had to do now is to say, here's a charging document and here's some evidence of this guy's identification. That's it. And that new law came into effect in the UK on the 1st of January 2004. So let's say 18 months or so after we'd been charged. And within a month, they requested our extradition. So they knew damn well they had no evidence that would stand up in a UK court to support these charges. But when the new law came in, they didn't need evidence. So then they came after us. This treaty was negotiated in secret. Uh, the, even ministers working in the Home Office themselves did not know it was going on. It was being done by the Home Secretary and his minions. And his own Home Office ministers didn't know it was going on. It was going on right the way through 2002 and into 2003. They signed it in secret, they smuggled it through Parliament, and they banged it into law on the 1st of January 2004. And the worst thing about it is that uniquely in any treaty that we have anywhere in the world, or that anybody has in the world, this treaty is non-reciprocal. If the US wishes to extradite a UK citizen, they do not need to provide any evidence. All they've got to provide is a charging document and some evidence of identification. If, by contrast, the UK wishes to extradite somebody from the US, they must bring evidence to a US court, and the US court will decide whether or not there is probable cause. The US can't reciprocate because it would be unconstitutional. Under the Constitution of the United States of America, you must have a probable cause hearing. You must. Now, it's easy to say that, well, you know, we're, we're the best treaty partners and we have a special relationship and everything else, but there is no other country in the world that has a non-reciprocal treaty with the US that will allow people citizens of another country to be shipped across to the US without evidence. They won't do it. It's, it's as simple as that. The man ultimately responsible was, was Tony Blair, but it was the, the UK Home Office, the Home Secretary and, and, and his people, who actually negotiated it. If one was a real cynic, one would say that, you know, the last five years of Tony Blair's premiership were all about securing himself a, a very lucrative speaking tour in the US and, and jobs with US banks. You know, he got a $2 million a year non-executive job with J.P. Morgan Chase last year. He's making an absolute fortune on the, the after dinner speaking tour. But my God, he used his own citizens as political currency to feather his own nest, in my humble opinion. I think in times gone past, some of the things that Tony Blair did that sold his own citizens down the river would have been close to treason. You know, the guy would have been up in the Tower of London having his head lobbed off. I think it's an absolute disgrace what he's done to the citizens of our country. He sold our birthright for a mess of pottage. And I think it's unconscionable. And the law needs to be changed.